So pushers uh, Sadiq here just going to run through a, a couple of tasks one is using text uh, the text tool in affinity photos just on the left here uh, and to just to differentiate here you've got uh, text in a frame uh, which is large um, um, amounts of text paragraph sentences or even whole pages typically for um, publishing purposes or um, layout of um, wording uh, in, a, in a in a book or a leaflet and so on which of course you can do in here although you wouldn't probably use affinity photo for that but it's, it's appropriate in some cases but really it's the artistic text tool that we're looking at so make sure that um, it's that artistic text tool that you've got selected in the first instance um, this is the image uh, of the woods that we're going to be working at so this is uh, some text that I've already put in. I'm going to wind back and start from the beginning. This is what we want to end up like. So we've got text there uh, that's um, semi-transparent. It's got a sh drop shadow to it. Um, obviously, you choose your font and size, but it's um, following the line of this shadow of the tree. And uh, the rest of the image is obviously being treated as well. When I go through each one of those steps with you and, and show you each, each one of those steps so that if we wind back to the beginning this is the starting image and we'll be um, converting it to black and white of course placing the text and putting a board around it and treating it so that it ends up like that okay so let's start from the beginning then okay and first of all of course uh, we need to um, uh, convert it to to black and white that would be the first thing to do so i'm just going to delete these other layers so we're back to the beginning okay and there's a number of ways of course you can convert an image to black and white using affinity um, like other programs but so uh, i'm going to show you using the uh, adjustment layers here so go to the adjustment layers and go to black and white and one of the reasons i want to show you and showcase this particular method is that this black and white conversion using the colored uh, uh, information colored information in your image allows you to um, uh, be selective and creative in exactly how your color uh, information is converted to um, shades of gray or shades of black and white so as you move for example there's red in the leaves on the floor so if i change that i can either have quite dull at the bottom but i want it quite nice and bright at the bottom so the red slider allows me to do that of course yellow there's a bit of yellow in that and uh, warm colors as well but then the green which is the foliage of the trees i don't particularly want that to come out because i'm going to put a vignette around that anyway so i'm turning that all the way down um, and you know just play with the um, experiment with the different sliders of course the blue sky um, we don't want that particularly bright because that will take uh, de uh, detract away from the um, the floor of the woods so I'm going to dial that down this one won't make that much difference once I'm happy with that just click on um, uh, that we've finished that of course at any time if you want to uh, uh, adjust it fine-tune it you just double click on that adjustment layer and you're able to do it okay and but for now I am going to for after each step just make it easier for you to uh, follow the steps I'm going to merge the layers down so that essentially you you do one editing step and then you go on to the next one okay and um, uh, the next one we won't do the vignette and the um, uh, uh, and the border until the end we're going to put the text in so make sure the right text tool is selected you can select the text first what font that you want you know let's just select something and then just click it and start typing so if we type in in the shadows or whatever text is appropriate or that you want uh, it's very small at the moment so if you click the um, the move tool there and that allows you if you zoom in of course you can um, see it a bit better and just just increase the size of it okay so Control and zero or command and zero to bring the image back to full screen and then roughly position it where you want to using that move tool I'll say roughly because there is a couple of other ways that I want you to uh, 
um, amend that first. I don't particularly like that um, text, uh, that font, so I'm going to change it. So you can change it at any time. And actually I might have this um, brush script in this instance, and then again, increase the size a little bit, not too big. The other thing I want to do is I want to position it. Now I want you to I want to show you something here. This bounding box you get when you use the move tool. Always keep an eye and zoom right in. Always keep an eye on what your mouse looks like. Of course, if you put your mouse there, it allows you to to change the size, to pull it, uh, and to stretch it. Of course, we all know that. Uh, the one at the top there allows you to twist it uh, uh, around a particular pivot point. If you go to the corner and your mouse turns into a um, uh, a sort of curved uh, pointer that allows you to twist it at that point and so on. But the other thing you might not know about is that if you actually put your mouse right next to the middle, it, you might not be able to see that. Let's just zoom in a bit more. It turns into a sheer option. So as you do that, it allows you to, to sort of shear and move that um, text or shape that text in a different way. It sort of uh, distorts it. So we could do a little bit of that, let's say there, and then there as well. Uh, and you can do it here. Always wait until you can see, you see it better when you do it that way. So maybe if we sort of say it's moving in this direction because of the way the shadow is of the tree, that might, that might uh, be more realistic. Um, but of course, what isn't realistic is that the shadow needs to recede away into the distance. So it needs to be larger here and, and smaller there. And one of the ways to do that, as you zoom in again, is to use this um, perspective tool here. Now, if this perspective tool or any one of these tools aren't visible to you because you don't use it and it's not in the toolbar, then remember, you just go to the view at the top in the menu, customize tools, and then you get all the tools that are available. And if they're not there, you just take it from wherever it is here. That's the um, uh, uh, mesh tool. You just click and drag it to there. I mean, it's already there, so we don't need to do it. And then that way, uh, your tool will be always be available there. Okay, so click the mesh. Make sure that that layer is selected. Obviously, the text layer, which is what we've been working on. And then you click on the uh, perspective tool. And that allows you, as incidentally, the perspective tool is different to the mesh tool. So they're two different tools, but they basically allow you to warp and distort um, a layer, information in a layer. So now, as I move, each one of these points you can see that you can really exaggerate um, what a particular layer looks like and then you can use that to manipulate in this case the text so it looks as if it's um, receding off into the distance okay so you just spend time to get that right once you're happy with that, just click apply at the bottom right here in the pop-up box. And now you can position it still roughly where you want to. might want it a little bit further in. Okay, I'm happy with that. And what, what I want to do is to make sure that that text layer, the blend mode with the bottom layer isn't just normal. So it doesn't just uh, block out the pixels below it. So if I change the blend mode to, and you can try different blend modes here, but multiply tends to show pixels through, um, the bottom pixels through, but if it, if it doesn't, then try different blend modes, see what works. Okay, that's giving you a very um, see-through. And I'm going to use multiply because that tends to work well. Um, and, and if you were to zoom in, okay, if it doesn't quite show you the way it's meant to look, then what we can do is click on um, the opacity and then reduce the opacity of that top text layer or whatever layers at the top. So you can see uh, the leaf litter um, through there. Obviously experiment with different 
blend modes and with different opacity levels and indeed with different fonts and different font um, styles all of that is is at your fingertips but this is the general principle of it okay now the other thing i want to do is to put a shadow or drop shadow behind the word shadows um, or the text okay so again make sure that that layer is selected on the right hand side in the layers palette and the drop shadows are in the uh, effects panel and if we go to um, uh, outer shadow here and my recommendation always is that don't just use these sliders and these variables in this little box here click on the gear icon and that pulls out this information into here so it's a bit bigger big easy to see but also you get an extra um, a slider or two an F extra option because you can see here we've got one two three sliders here we've got one two three four sliders so this um, uh, intensity slider isn't there so always make it pop out so that you've got that and obviously if you've got real estate on your screen it's always a good idea anyway so first of all what color do we want the shadow we do want it to be uh, black because this is a black and white image and um, the text is black so that, that makes uh, sense so we'll leave that where it is and just change the the, the size of the and the offset of the tech of the shadow and the intensity of it if we if we zoom in you'll be able to see that just by the a and the w the offset allows you to make it more prominent uh, and of course having the uh, intensity and then the radius really allows you to blur it or to have it more defined so of course a shadow needs to have a, an element of blur to it uh, in most instances so i think i'll be happy with that click close so we've done that let's just come out and um, to the maximum and uh, we've got two parts uh, two steps left uh, one is the vignette and the other is the border so let's put the vignette in next so again get to the layer we've finished what we need to do with the text so we'll merge that down as well so merge down it then basically combines the two layers together because the vignette needs to sit on top of everything else so again many ways to make a vignette but i'll show you the quick way so you go to filters colors and then there's an option in there called vignette okay and then in this pop-up box obviously experiment with do you want the vignette to be darker inside and it's like a reverse vignette and lighter outside or do you want it the traditional vignette where it's uh, lighter in the middle and uh, dark around the edges or the corners and then of course the size of the vignette and the scale of it and the shape of it do you want it more oval or do you want it more circular so you choose obviously what you want click apply and that's done the vignette so it's basically allowing the eye to focus in this middle area which is what we want to do which is where the interest is and where the where the text is and then the final task of course is to apply a border so again we've done this before go to effects um, just um, make these um, options that we have used before or, or um, uh, we did use earlier just constant in and then back up collapse them again so that it's easier to see what what we want next what we want is a um, uh, an, in, an outline so click on outline again click on the gear icon to pull that out so we want to put an outline around the image okay and uh, do we want the outline to be black well not really because the image is black broadly around the side so we want it to be white so whichever method suits you to get the right color that you want um, select that color so we want it to be white we don't want the border to be on the outside of the image because actually there's no canvas for it to go on we don't want it to be in the center we want it to be on the inside of the outer edge okay and um, we want it solid color and then just change the size of that border by clicking on the radius so you can see that quite clearly coming through and you choose what you want i'm happy about there about sort of 40 pixels 45 pixels okay and then click close and that's it simply and then once you're happy with that then uh, you would obviously you would want to save it if that's the end point of your editing task so file 
export. And remember in Affinity, it is export that you want in most instances and then save it as a JPEG. Probably you'd want to, um, but you've got the other options up there. Change the size, um, the JPEG quality, all of that. Um, you can just by doing that slider, just by bringing it down by 5% uh, allows you to really reduce the file size drastically. So at 100%, the file size is eight megabytes, just under, and then just by reducing it by 5%, it um, it reduces it almost to half so that that's always a good tip to uh, to to think about uh, and then of course you just click on export that allows you to then rename it and put it in the folder that you want to put it uh, and so on we won't do that now and uh, have a go at that look at those tools check that you've got the right text tool uh, and do it a step at a time so in the layers we end up with just one final layer because we collapsed and combined each of the steps at each point just makes it a bit easier you don't have to do that but it might uh, might be easier to follow okay give that a go and do share your thoughts on this particular uh, task and any difficulties that you have and i'll try and answer them uh, but also uh, share some of your results as well uh, and, and and any ways to improve the process would be welcome so thank you very much